Hello everyone and happy Valentine's, Galentine's, or Palentine's Day, whichever you are celebrating. My name is Anna and I'm a Visitor Experience Assistant at Guelph Museums. Each year we look forward to hosting our Valentine's Tea at the Guelph Civic Museum. So while we're all staying home to keep each other safe, we wanted to bring some of that experience to you. We're going to cover the history of afternoon tea in five minutes. It's important to remember that the history of tea is long and complex around the world, and there are many useful resources out there to learn more about the origin of tea itself, tea customs from cultures around the world, and the colonial history of tea drinking in Europe and North America. Today, we're only taking a quick look at the social practice of afternoon tea, which developed in Britain and was brought to North America with the arrival of European settlers. The practice of tea drinking was first brought to Britain by Catherine of Braganza, a Portuguese princess who married King Charles II. However, it was not until the 1800s that the social custom of afternoon tea developed. It was also during this time that tea became more affordable and surpassed ale in Britain as the national drink. It is believed that Her Grace Anna Maria Russell, Duchess of Bedford, first introduced afternoon tea while visiting Beaver Castle in Leicestershire in the mid-1840s. It is said that she complained of a sinking feeling in the mid-afternoon between lunch and dinner and would take a light meal of tea with cakes and sandwiches to tide her over. She began inviting her friends to join her for these meals. Teas were more casual and took less effort to prepare than formal entertaining and quickly became an established custom in many middle and upper class households. In Canada, afternoon teas were initially held only by the upper class in cities, but by the latter half of the 19th century, it became a popular form of entertainment in many Canadian households. There were different types of afternoon teas known by many names, such as at home, five o'clock tea, high tea, and kettle drum. Each type of afternoon tea varied in formality and could be preceded by a written invitation by the hostess. Table settings were an important part of afternoon teas for the middle class in Europe and North America. The middle class wanted to appear as refined as the upper class and be accepted into high circles of society. They purchased china, linen, and silverware to demonstrate their civility and used etiquette books and domestic manuals to learn how to properly set a table. As you can see, we have some beautiful examples of tea sets, china, linen, and silverware in our collection at Guelph Museums. Silver teapots and china teacups weren't the only thing a fashionable lady would need for an afternoon tea. As the social custom developed, so too did the fashion itself. Tea gowns became an essential garment for afternoon tea. Tea gowns were elegant but informal dresses popular from the 1870s to the 1930s that were easy to put on without a lady's maid and could be worn without a corset. Highly influential in the development and popularity of the tea gown was Lucille Lady Duff Gordon, who spent her early childhood right here in Guelph. Lucille became known for her romantic and luxurious designs and was a proponent of comfort for her prestigious clientele, designing slit skirts instead of hobble skirts and brassieres instead of corsets. She favored draping silhouettes, layers of delicate fabric, and her signature silk rosebuds for her trademark tea gowns. The beautiful gowns, lingerie, and accessories she designed were tremendously popular among royalty, the aristocracy, and Hollywood stars of the late Victorian and Edwardian periods. While Lucille was taking the international fashion world by storm, back here in Guelph, tea continued to be an important staple in social and domestic customs. Merchants like Ralph W. Humphreys, Fielding and McLaren Tea Merchants, and the Douglas Tea Shop provided tea to the residents of Guelph. Afternoon tea was taken at home, and at popular gathering spots like the Cutton Club. Souvenir teacups were even created of significant Guelph landmarks. We have many tea-related objects in our collection today at Guelph Museums, from silver teapots to Tetley tea tins. It shows just how popular and widespread the drinking of tea became, 
from a beverage that could only be afforded by the most elite and wealthy people to one that could be enjoyed by anyone. Residents of Guelph are still known to enjoy a cuppa to this very day. From tea in the gardens of McRae House with our famous McRae blend tea, to the ever popular boathouse, enjoying a cup of tea and light snacks with friends continues to be a popular pastime. We hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the history of afternoon tea, and we look forward to welcoming you back for tea with us again soon at Guelph Museums.